guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erin and I do mostly budgeting videos like the one you're about to see. Today is my once a month $2,382 savings challenge video. And this is where I stuff the entire amount that I need to save for the any particular month within the given year. So just to show you how this works, well, I need my budget planner, which is this, because I need to use my current week's worksheet. But this is my bullet journal. And way back in the beginning, when I first started this in January, I first started this particular notebook um, or journal, I created a schematic, like a grid, um, for this $2,382 savings challenge. And this is not my idea. This savings challenge has been around for a while. Um, and the way it works is, say, January is the first um, month of the year. Well, let's not say it is. It is. Um, January is the first month of the year, so you would save $1 um, to denote the first month. Um, so $1 every day for 31 days, so for the entire month. And then February is the second month, so you would save $2 a day. March is the third, third month, you save $3 a day, and so on and so forth. But back when I started this, I had some really good feedback from some viewers, and somebody had commented, you know, maybe it would be good to try and do the savings challenge backwards. So instead of doing December and December, we would do December and January and work our way back. And there's two schools of thought for this, or two reasons why this might benefit you, or maybe it, it wouldn't. Um, a lot of people might not have $372 that's needed for December during the month of December, just because of all the holiday, Christmas shopping, things like that going on. But if you're somebody who uses your credit card during December, and then you work to pay it off in January, or maybe even January and February, maybe then you wouldn't have have all that extra money. So it just depends on how you do your holiday shopping or you know when you schedule things. So I ended up doing it backwards. So in December I saved $12 a day, November 11, October 10, September 9, August 8th. Um what am I saying? January I saved 12. February I saved 11. Um March, April, May, and June, all the way down to $7. So for July, so you kind of ignored this column over here. Um, so for July, we're saving $6 a day for $180 total. So I do have my cash ready to go, and I also have my binder. But what I need to do, as soon as I finish this video, I'm actually going to redo this budget worksheet. So these are the printables that you can find on my Etsy shop. But for a limited time, you can still get the June budget kit, which is 12 days worth of um, worksheets and a calendar and all kinds of great stuff. Um, you can still get that for free. So I need to redo this. So I'm actually just going to use a Sharpie because if not, this is going to pull up. So I'm saving $180 for this challenge and that's going to go under savings. However, I might be adding to my savings a little bit this month too. So I'm going to put this here for the purposes of this video, but I'm going to reconfigure what my savings goal is going to be um, for the month of July and make sure that I don't want to add anything else before I close this out. So this was my paycheck worksheet for July 15th. I got paid and my husband got his first base pay. And then so far we have stuffed our variable expenses for 810. This was the entire amount of the income. Variables repeated down here. This is my receipts area in this worksheet. And then ultimately I may have some remaining, but not this time. So this time I'm taking this down to a zero based budget because I do need some for a project that we have coming up around the house. And then I'm actually going to be taking additional money from my variable or from my sinking fund stash, which I have recently unstuffed. So I can put this away and now I just need to work on this grid. Here is my cash. So I have $180 here. So let's see. 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 20, 40, 60, 80. So I got my cash ready to go. And this is the binder that I use for the savings challenge or really any savings. I had my pool money in here as well, but the pool was paid off. 
And as you can see, there's a receipt for full payment. And I have this in here, but the ink from the receipt rubbed off. So I don't even know why I still have that. It's absolutely useless. And then I had my mom's flooring that was already done. So now the only thing I have in this binder is my savings challenge. So I'm going to remove the money from here and I'll take this out and make sure that we have the correct amount. And then I'll go ahead and add the new funds and then we'll total everything up. So the last time I added to this was June. And as you can see, I added $217 and it brought me to a total of $1,747 saved already. So just keep in mind that the ultimate goal for this particular saving challenge for this year is $2,382. Of course, you could tailor this and make this challenge your own and you could just make it like, I don't know, in December save, I don't know, more round numbers if you wanted to do it like that. Or you could just save a dollar a day for every month. Um, you could do whatever you want. It's just using the calendar, you know, to your advantage. So let's make sure we have $1,747 together and then we'll add the 180. So 100, 200, 300, 354, 455, 556, 657, 20, 40, 60, 88, 20, 40, 60, 89, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1,000. 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 83, 20, 40, 60, 84, 20, 40, 60, 85, 20, 40, 60, 86, 20, 40, 60, 87, 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47. All right, so we're adding 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 80. We're adding 180. And it'll give us a grand total. All right, let me zoom in. So we had 1747 plus 180 is $1,927. I need to get a calendar that's, or a calculator that's backlit. So 19... 27. So you may be wondering, what are you going to do with this money? And that's such a great question. And the honest answer is, I have no idea yet. I really haven't thought about beyond the finish line. So I'm going to finish this up in December. And at that point, I will have the entire $2,382. And I just haven't thought about how I'm going to spend that money or what I'm going to do with it, how I'm going to allocate it. And a part of me is like, you know, don't be foolish about it. Don't buy anything unnecessary. Go ahead and just put it on the mortgage because that's our main goal at the moment. And I still feel like that's probably the best thing to do with it. But there's also a part of me that is like, is there a better way to spend this right now? So for our mortgage, just in case you guys um, are new, we are trying to pay off our mortgage early. And we've been really hustling and doing everything in our power to do so over the past, I don't know, six, seven months, eight months. And it's coming along really well. I mean, I'm very proud of the progress that we've made. Oops, I didn't fill this out. I'm really proud of the progress that we have made, but I'm also thinking to myself, we're, are we making ourselves like house poor? You know, people who like constantly put every single extra penny on their mortgage and don't do anything else. You know, you've heard of situations like that. And while I don't think that we're in the position like we're not doing anything else and we're locked in to only that, it just feels like there's some other things around our house that also need to be addressed. 
and that maybe just focusing on the mortgage balance is a little bit short-sighted just for like what we have going on um, because we do need a lot of improvements done. And since we decided not to sell our house and to, you know, stay in the same place and just, you know, make it more... I don't know, more custom to, to what we want or to what we were looking at when we were looking for another house. Um, I'm just not sure that, you know, some extra money like this wouldn't be better spent on a home improvement. I don't know. I don't know. Let me tell you, the old me would have said, let's go buy an expensive purse. Like that is who I used to be. I used to whenever I had extra money, it would literally burn a hole in my pocket and I couldn't wait to spend it. And sometimes I would spend it so mindlessly without thinking of consequence or, you know, um, I don't know, just, just without thinking. And that got me into so much trouble over the years. Oh my goodness. I had to dig my way out of debt so many times. And I think that's, the biggest thing that I love about this channel is that it keeps me focused and it keeps me looking forward. And if I even got tempted, which I rarely do anymore, if I got tempted to like blow money like that on something unnecessary, the first thing that would come into my mind is how am I, how am I going to explain this and sound like an adult on my YouTube channel? because I have to account for the money because I do my paycheck videos. So how am I going to explain this without sounding ridiculous, you know? And so that kind of keeps me honest. I think it's kind of like how I felt when I used to go to Weight Watchers. Sometimes I would stick to the diet only because I knew I had to get weighed in front of somebody. Now, these were the days when like you would go into the facility and they would have your little weight book and, you know, you would have to like literally get weighed in front of somebody. And I think sometimes that was the only thing that kept me going. So my motivations are very strange, but they are what they are. So anyways, that's my little spiel for the day. Um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you for your support, your kind comments, um, and for always like checking in on me and stuff. I, I just can't tell you how much it means to me. If you haven't already subscribed and you love budget videos um, that use real numbers and go over paychecks and goals and things like that, this may be a channel that you enjoy. So I would love if you stuck around and subscribed. And um, for everybody else, I, as always, I hope I see you guys in my next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.